fellow orchid lovers, it's Danielle. I've decided to post a hopefully short uh, Phalaenopsis update video. I have 22 Phalaenopsis orchids, so I don't know how short it's going to be, but I'm going to try to just, you know, kind of spotlight each one and show you what they're doing. Currently, I only have three Phalaenopsis in bloom. Um, I'm hoping that the cooler weather that we've been getting might induce some of them to spike, uh, but we'll have to see. I've had a bunch of stuff going on in my life, uh, so I've been a little irregular with posting, um, but usually the summer is like that for me, so I do apologize. Um, more recently, my little pit puppy decided to make contact with something that was very sharp. We don't really know what happened but as you can see, her hind leg suffered quite a bad laceration, so she needed surgery. She's got a cone on her head, and she's miserable. So, my poor baby. So we're just keeping an eye on her and trying to keep her calm, which is easier said than done. If you know much about little pit puppies, um, they're not calm. Okay, so um, I'm gonna start with my mini Phalaenopsis first. Most of my orchids, most of my Phalaenopsis orchids do not have names. I mean, I've given them names, but they don't actually have like um, a name for the particular hybrid that they are. Uh, so if you don't really like Phalaenopsis orchids, or you don't really have Phalaenopsis orchids, this video might not be something that you'll find interesting, but here goes anyways. So uh, this is one of my mini fowls. She's actually the least, doing the least, she's doing the worst. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. Um, her roots when I got her were really, really bad. She has beautiful flowers, beautiful, beautiful flowers. She's actually probably my favorite um, Phalaenopsis because of her flowers. But as you can see, her roots, mm, not so good. Uh, she did have a fair amount of roots when I got her, but they were all, you see the yellow, all rotting when I pulled her out of her bark. Um, she was in a mixture of bark and moss, I think. I don't really remember. Um, I did cut her stem because how quickly her roots were dying, I was concerned she might have um, fusarium. And as you can see, um, a lot of the roots are dying back from the stem. And that can be a sign of fusarium because fusarium blocks um, like the vascular system, so they can't, um, they can no longer use their vascular system. It kind of like blocks it. And so that's why I thought she might have fusarium. but her stem is clean. Uh, so I don't think she does. I didn't cut up too high because I didn't want to take what roots she had away. Um, but she's continuing to have problems with her roots. Uh, some are staying green, so that's good. So she is still hydrating. She did put out a new one there. Um, it's got the tiniest little growing tip on it. Uh, we're gonna have problems focusing today, aren't we? There we go. Um, so, you know, hopefully she'll continue to grow. She's a nice fat root, so I have high hopes for that. Um, and, you know, with an orchid, when you do have the rotting, you can take the velum off. I know I've said this pretty much every video that I've featured a Phalaenopsis, but I'll say it again. Um, you can take the rotting velum off and just leave the part that is green still in place. Like this one, for instance, this is all rotting. So I'll take this off. You see how it's still green underneath? That root's still alive. I'll take the rotting velum off, you know, down to wherever. I'll find where it is still healthy. I'll pinch it and I'll take it off. And the reason I do that is because anything that's decomposing has bacteria in it. And that bacteria can affect healthy tissue. So if I left that there, that bacteria would slowly but surely affect this healthy tissue and that it would also lose that. So now it has a better chance of surviving. And honestly, this root will stay green. I know that for a fact because I've had several orchids with this problem. I find that a lot of times when the roots are dead by the stem and it's not fusarium, it's because it, this orchid was watered with ice cubes. And I happen to know that this orchid did come from the store where they do that. My husband purchased this orchid from me. Um, I stopped buying from that store because I know that they do that. 
um, but he wanted to cheer me up and he went to the store to pick up some groceries and he got me two orchids so um, I'm pretty sure the reason why this is happening is because uh, this portion of the root was was burnt by the, the ice cube so um, it's not the end of the world. I've had orchids lose all their roots and still save them, so I'm not really concerned. Um, it's frustrating because it's going to take her a while to bounce back, and I probably won't get blooms for a really long time, and I do absolutely love her blooms, but it's not um, the end of the world, like I said. So, that's her. I took rather longer on her than I intended. I, I'm sorry. Uh, this is the other orchid that I got um, with her. This, I call her little chick because she has like um, really cute yellow flowers with like an orange lip and it just reminds me of chicks. Uh, she actually has pretty decent roots. Um, her flower spikes are gone. She did grow this leaf in my care. Um, it's almost as big as the other leaves. I don't know if it's done growing. Um, every four weeks I go through my collection and I take measurements of everything and see you know where my orchids are and take notes on my computer. I have an Excel spreadsheet that I like to keep track. Um, but she's doing pretty good. She's no growing tips on her roots, but um, her roots are not dying back, so I think she's she's in pretty good shape. Uh, this is my healthiest mini fowl. I've had her for quite a while now. I would say almost a year. Um, her roots extended in my care. I, I realize that you probably are getting a shine, so let me put her down and see. So you see how... Um, the roots go down like that. This little piece that comes off of it, that she she grew those in my care. So every single one of her old roots branched. Um, there's several things about mini fowls that I've heard that I don't know how true they are, but I kind of followed them with her and she seems to like it. Um, I've heard that mini fowls don't like their roots to be crowded. Uh, so I make sure I give her a lot of space for her roots. Um, they don't really like to be like the pushing on the bottom of the vase so I, you know she's in a nice tall vase you see she's growing some new roots for me um, and I've also heard that they are high feeders and I do feed her very well um, I, I give her Vanda feed um, which is a higher level um, if you're if you have questions about you know fertilizing and feeding your orchids I do have several videos on that so definitely go check them out um, so she grew this leaf in my care and as you can see it is considerably larger <laughs> than her other leaves so I think she does like the higher levels of feed uh, her roots were not affected um, she's just been really happy um, there's another root uh, I did cut her spike and she does have what appears to be a little branch there but don't be fooled that's been there for months and it hasn't done anything it's still green why aren't you focusing there you go it is still green so it may still develop into something but it hasn't yet but wowzer look at that leaf you know um, I did recently find out that um, sometimes nurseries will give plants growth inhibitors to keep them small. I did not know that, so that might be why this leaf is so much so much bigger than the other leaves. It, that could be, or it could be happy with what I'm doing, which is giving it a very high level of feed. Not really sure. Either way, um, that I consider that progress in the right direction, a, a larger structure. I think you know that she's pretty happy plus the new roots and all that kind of stuff so that's my other mini fowl uh, this is the orchid I've had the longest um, I've had her since June of 2016 uh, she almost died <laughs> she lost every single root she had and um, this is the orchid that really taught me how to save phalaenopsis orchids um, that lose all their roots I do have a video about that as well so if you have an orchid that's losing her roots, um, you know, check that video out. She did bloom for me this year. Um, this is the first Phalaenopsis orchid that I have that bloomed for me and didn't bloom off an old spike that I bought her with. Um, so she developed and put out this spike all on her own, and I am so thrilled. Uh, the tip of it, it doesn't look like it's, you know, going to do anything. It's slightly yellowed. So I don't think she's going to extend. Some of my Phalaenopsis orchids have done that. 
I don't think she's going to. Um, if it starts to brown, I may cut it back to her first unused node to see if I can get her to rebloom. Um, but you know, she, you can see she's been through a lot. She these are you know two of the leaves that she had when I got her. Uh, she developed a teeny tiny leaf, another teeny leaf. She's got another leaf coming, um, but, she, but she's going in the right direction. You know, the the one leaf that she developed is small. The next one is bigger. Hopefully, this one will be even bigger. She put out a spike, so she's you know she's doing good. She's doing well, and I'm 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 thrilled that I was able to save her because she is very pretty. She's a white um, orchid with like purple spots and a yellow lip, which is really really pretty. So, um, this one back here, coincidentally, is the same exact orchid. <laughs> Not literally, but um, bloom-wise. She also lost all of her roots except one. Um, unfortunately, I got these orchids when I really didn't know what I was doing. Um, and then I put them in water culture, and I figured out how to do water culture properly. And, um, yeah, they've been really happy. Uh, so, she... You know grew this leaf in my care again it's a smaller structure than her older leaves but she was down to just one root so that's you know that tells you why um, she's growing another leaf uh, this leaf she also grew in my care so this one came first then this one which is slightly larger and then this one so hopefully again the structures will get bigger she put out a lot of new roots for me so we're really happy with that her growing tips have gone away on her roots which I'm not too concerned with let me see yeah They've gone away, and, and I'm not really worried about that because the temperatures are getting cooler, and a lot of orchid whoa, a lot of orchids have a tendency to slow down in the cooler temperatures. So um, I'm not really concerned. Also, a lot of my Valinopsis orchids are not blooming, um, and again, I'm not really concerned about that. I, you know, this this past year has been a really big learning curve for me. Uh, March of 2019 will be two years doing water culture and I've really learned a lot in this past year about my orchids and about orchids in general and about my environment um, and I, f I do feel that maybe the fact that some of my plants aren't blooming is my fault and my environment but I'm not going to change things in my environment um, too drastically to accommodate them and the reason for that is I have a lot of pets and um, that's why I call it Danielle's Orchid Ranch, because in addition to 80-something orchids, I also have quite a few animals. Um, and some of them are very heat sensitive. And so during the summer, when orchids typically would be getting a higher temperature, that would induce them to then bloom, like Cattleyas specifically, they're not getting above 75 degrees, because I can't let the temperature in my house get higher than that, otherwise some of my animals will suffer. And to me, the plant's still green, the plant's still growing, it's just not flowering. And if that's the price I have to pay to keep my pets safe, then that's the price I'll pay. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I do enjoy green, so I'm not completely upset <laughs> with it. They're still growing. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Uh, this one is very interesting. This one I got um, in March of 2017. She was a huge huge plant she went downhill really quickly after I got her she was the one that her stem smelled like pesticides not rot but actual pesticides and her roots died back she just she was a mess and I was trying to save her I was using the same methods that I was using for my other orchids that were successful and she just was like resisting every effort and then she started growing these teeny tiny leaves out of the top of her, and I thought, okay, she's putting out new structures. But recently I decided um, to cut her stem to see if, you know, maybe it was a fusarium problem. I think she put out a keiki. I, I, this is a, to me, this is a keiki. Unfortunately, this keiki did have roots, and in my process of disconnecting her from the pesticide, crazy, yucky stem, I broke it yeah typical me um, but I I really and sincerely believe that this is actually a keiki that she put out of her crown I think the orchid was dying and that's some you know some phalaenopsis that's the way that they'll kind of quote-unquote save themselves is they'll put out a keiki from their crown and I think that's what she did I'm pretty sure that this is a keiki um, 
a very blurry cakey, sorry. It looks like she's putting out a new root there. Keep in, there you go. You know, putting out a new root there. She's got another leaf coming. Uh, she is difficult to hydrate because um, she has no roots. So what I'll do is I'll just, you know, hover her over the water for humidity. I know it's really hard to see and I'm sorry about that. But every once, like every uh, two, one to two days, depending on how hot it's been, I'll raise the water so that it's just touching her stem and I'll leave it like that for 20 minutes. So her stem gets nice and hydrated and then I'll drop the water again. Um, you know, it's, it's labor intensive. <laughs> It's not for people that are lazy <laughs> and I consider myself lazy but you know it's just one plant so I, I can handle that but um yeah that's what I do and she's responding I mean her leaves are not as firm as I'd like they are slightly leathery but the poor thing has no roots so I'm not expecting you know amazing things out of her but she's not dying and she's putting out a new structure so um, I guarantee that leaf is gonna be tiny <laughs> um, but she's still trying so I'm gonna keep her <laughs> I'm not giving up on her yet um, this orchid, I love the blooms on her, but I haven't seen them in almost two years. Um, it's like a purple bloom with like little teeny tiny darker purple spots on it. Just really beautiful. Um, she's one of the orchids that lost, um, the top portion of her roots. Um, I only have one left, but you can see that's an old root right there. And I had to remove the velamen because it was rotting. Again, I think this was an orchid that was fed with ice cubes. Um, so that's the only old root remaining, but for about, uh, like eight months, that's all she had. And she was still hydrating herself through old roots that the velamen had been removed near the stem. And she lived to tell the tale. So that did work. Um, she has a lot of new roots growing, which is awesome. She finally is giving me new roots and branching roots. Um, her leaves can't decide what direction they want to go in. It's kind of weird. I am trying to keep her in the same spot. So I don't know why she's doing like this spiral effect. <laughs> um, but her leaves are getting bigger. As you can see, this is the first one she put out for me, which is small. The next, um, wait. Yes, and then she put she put out this one, which is also small. The next one was bigger. This one's even bigger. And I get, you know, now that she has um, roots, that's you know what's making the structures able to get larger because they're they're being fed properly and hydrated properly and just so that you know i do know that there's a fair amount of algae in that glass i have this is watering day but i haven't actually watered so usually what i do on watering day is i'll take the glass i'll you know clean it out i'll put fresh um, fertilized water in it and again if you want to know what i do for fertilizer i do have several videos on that um, and then i'll rinse the roots until they turn green I usually use warm, like tepid water to do that because that gets them green faster. And then I put them, you know, in the water and I put them back where they live. Um, this is one of my few orchids that actually has a name. This is um, Fal Fuller's Gold Stripe. Um, I've had this or orchid since April of 2017, I believe. Uh, she's she's a real puzzle. <laughs> These leaves growing this way is my fault. But usually when an orchid puts out a small structure, it's because they have root loss. This orchid never lost her roots, never. I mean, I recently cut a few of her older roots off because they weren't branching and they looked like they were just really woody and weren't really helping her, but she's never lost her roots. So I'm not really sure why she got a smaller structure, but now, it doesn't seem to matter because her structure immediately following that was larger and the one following that was even larger larger actually than her original structures that she came with um, and now she's working on another one and as you can see she's getting a fair amount of new roots so um, she's doing pretty good she had a green spike that was staying green um, and I had left it for a couple of months she had it but I recently cut it off because I want her to focus on new roots because at those old roots, I don't know how long they're gonna last, and I want her to push those out so that I can hydrate her without getting too close to her stem. So that's my Fuller's Gold Stripe. Um, this is my Young Home Sweetie. This is another orchid that actually has a name. Her tag is way down there in the algae-ridden water, which, yes, I will clean that out. Um, these orchids have, you know, the algae because they're closer to the glass. 
she's the one that developed the keiki on her on her spike. So the keiki used to be in his uh, her own little little glass, but her root got so big that I was having trouble finding a glass that accommodated her without like making her like tip over. So I decided to put her in with the mother plant and it seems to be working fine. Um, a lot of amazing root growth on this orchid. I mean, she had not so great roots when I got her and she's really responded. That is a week's worth of algae growth, by the way, because I change the water and clean the vase every week. So, um, I do get a fair amount of algae in my orchids that are close to the window. Uh, so in addition to a keiki, she put out this leaf for me, which was smaller, this leaf, which was bigger, and now she's working on this leaf. Um, no sign of new spikes, but again, I'm hoping that the cold weather might induce her to spike, not really sure. Um, this purple color that she does have is something that's just typical of this type of orchid. It's not the sign of a deficiency. I did look it up just because I want to make sure I'm feeding her properly. Uh, this one is my Harlequin orchid. She doesn't have a tag, but I did look her up and I and I found her. Um, she's another one that lost pretty much every single root. Um, and then grew some new roots, as you can see. She's got green growing tips. She's doing pretty good. Um, she's gotten a few new structures in my care. Uh, this, this one here, wait that one there this one here this one there and as you can see again they're getting bigger so um, she's doing much better uh, again she had no roots at one time so smaller structures are to be expected um, but other than that she's doing pretty good uh, this one is the one I got with her this is my um, elegant Karen Aloha it's a yellow orchid with um, red dots she has never had a problem with roots she came to me with good roots. The roots remained good. Um, her old roots branched. She got a ton, ton, ton of new roots. Um, but she's never rebloomed for me. And I'm not really sure why. Again, um, I might not be giving them what they require as far as higher temperatures during the day. Um, they're pretty much staying at 75 or lower um, during the day. I have been opening the windows. Um, it's been getting down into the 60s at night, so I have been turning the ACs off and letting it get cooler in my house um, in the hopes that maybe she might, some of them might actually bloom. Um, this one I don't have a name for. I just call her Princess um, because she's like the princess in the pea and she's dissatisfied with life and everything about it. Uh, she's another one that lost her roots and she lost her roots pretty much the same week that I got her, she lost everything. Um, her stem looked a little suspect to me. I didn't like the way it looked. Um, nothing's mushy, but it just doesn't look right to me. So I did cut her stem. There is no purple, so I don't think she has fusarium, but she's not a happy bunny and I'm not really sure why. Um, I mean, obviously she has no roots, but <laughs> or she had no roots and now she's growing roots. But even the roots she's growing, they're not great. They're really not great. And, you know, I know the colder temperatures will make the green tips go away. So, um, I don't know, there's a balance I'm gonna have to play there. Um, she has two of her old leaves left. This one never really perked up, this one did. Um, she grew this leaf in my care when she had absolutely not one root. And then since she's grown roots, she grew this leaf in my care. She does have purple on her, and I don't think that that is normal, so she does have some type of deficiency. It might be a calcium deficiency, um, but again, she had no roots, so her stores of nutrients are probably significantly lower than they should be. Um, I'm really hoping that those new roots uh, will help her to balance out, and she'll start to get healthy, um, but she's another one that's really resisting my efforts. Uh, this Phalaenopsis I've had for about a year, and she has been in constant bloom since I got her. Um, she's the one that had blooms about up to here. They all fell off and the spike extended. I got like another five. They fell off and the spike extended. I got another three. They fell off. The spike extended. I got another four. Um, the spike is still green. Let me 
me see if I can bring you in. Yep, it's still green, and there's happy sap on it. And that's, I found with this orchid, what she does when she's going to push again, is she gets happy sap on the tip. So hopefully she'll push some more. I mean, it beautiful, beautiful saturated um, pink color. Just gorgeous. Um, love, love, love seeing her. Uh, one of the flowers is going over. Oh. I just gave them off in my hand. Um, so that might be why the tip is now getting the happy sap because she may be thinking of extending. Uh, the plant itself is very healthy. She has never given me a new leaf. I've had her for a year and she's never grown a leaf. So um, it may be because she was focusing on her spike, but her leaves that she does have are healthy and leathery and I'm not concerned that she hasn't decided to give me a leaf. She has decided to give me a fair amount of new roots very recently. So she's probably just trying to focus on keeping the spike happy and the roots happy and then maybe she'll give me a leaf. I'm not really sure. I'm not really concerned. She's very healthy. So we'll, we'll leave it at that and let her do what she wants to do. I'm not going to cut off a perfectly healthy spike on a perfectly healthy orchid just because it's not putting out a leaf. I'm, I'm not worried about that. So yeah, I get to look at that all the time and I just love it. Um, okay, so these are some of my other orchids. Again, I'm sorry how long this video is turning out to be. Uh, 22 orchids, uh, brief spotlight on each. Not so brief, I guess. This is my Shilleriana. Um, if you remember when I got her, I was extremely disappointed. She had two leaves and a teeny tiny new leaf when I got her, and her roots were atrocious. Like, when I say atrocious, I mean atrocious. They were shriveled and ugly and brown. Um, this is one of her old roots. This is one of her old roots. I mean, just yucky, gnarly nonsense. So I was really dissatisfied with her. Um, I put her in water culture, because that's how I grow. <laughs> and she grew one new root, two new roots. She's got another one coming there and her leaf has progressed. And her leaf is not as big as her last leaf, but um, I think she came to me in some pretty bad shape, so I'm not really surprised that this root, this, um, did I just say root or did I say leaf? Um, I meant leaf if I said root. I'm not really surprised that this leaf didn't get as big as this leaf because, I, I mean, I don't know which video she's in, but, uh, you know, when I first got her, I, I was very upset <laughs> with the quality of her, and um, she's she's responded well to water culture. Uh, someone actually did recently ask me how my Shilleriana is doing, so um, I'm sorry, I forget your name at the moment, but I, I forget what I did two seconds ago, so don't really be surprised by that. If you just heard that noise, that's my cats upstairs running. They sound like galloping horses. Um... So sorry about that, but um, yeah, she's doing really good. I'm I'm really happy with with my results with her. So hopefully she'll continue and she'll give me a new leaf soon. I really think she's way 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 too young to give me a spike. I'm thinking probably about three, maybe four years before she'll give me a spike. But I don't I don't know much about Shilleriana. I don't know much about you know, this orchid. So I just got her because I think the blooms are gorgeous, but also I love the leaves. She don't even have to get a spike and I'll be happy with her. So that's her. Um, this is the other, another orchid that I have that actually has a name. Her name is Joy Fairy Tale. Let me see. And she's a mix between Zhu Chang Orange. I know I didn't say that right. And Violacea. So she's got really pretty blooms. Um, she grew this leaf in my care which is considerably larger than her other leaf, but she is a light seeker. She is in the front row of my Phalaenopsis and it's still not good enough for her. I mean, she is bending towards the light like nobody's business. She likes the light. She's grown a lot of new roots. Um, again, her old roots were gnarly, but they did branch um, and she's gotten a lot of new roots, so that's good. She does have a flower spike, um, mitten right there. Come on, buddy. There you go. But she's had that since I got her and it hasn't progressed. It stayed green though. 
So it may be that she's just waiting for something to trigger it to start growing, or it may never do anything. But it is green and healthy, so, you know, possibilities there. But otherwise, she's a very healthy plant. She's a very happy plant. Um, puts out a lot of aerials, but I don't care about that. I think it's kind of cool. But she's a light lover. She just loves, can't get enough sun. And she's right in direct sun for, you know, a couple hours. Um, this is the orchid my niece got me. I call her Charlie because that's my niece's name. Um, she did rebloom from her old spike. She got three flowers. This is the only one left. The tip is still green, but I don't really think it's going to do anything else. Um, she got this leaf in my care. Maybe she got both of these. I don't really remember. Um, I'll have to go back to my old videos to find out. Um, her old roots branched. So as you can see there, they branched. Um, she does have a few uh, green growing tips. She is, I would call her happy. Her leaves are green and fleshy. Her spike's doing good. She's growing new roots. So she's doing pretty good. Um, this is Diane. This is the one that my sister-in-law purchased for me when her grandmother died. Um, and I just love her. She's gorgeous. She's such a delicate butter yellow. She's much more vivid than you're seeing. She's a little washed out on the video, but her lip is gorgeous. I mean, just like such gorgeous fluorescent colors. Um, I did cut her spike and she put out two blooms and these have been with me for a couple of months now with no signs of fading. So I'm really happy about that. The plant itself is extremely healthy. I mean, lots and lots of new roots. Her old roots, um, they did great in the crossover to water culture. Um, she grew this leaf in my care, which again is bigger than her older structures. She's growing another one. And then I saw, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it while holding the camera. Is that it? Um, I don't, I'm not going to be able to bring you in. I, I know right now that my, you can kind of see it there. Maybe if I put it down, I can point with my finger and focus do you see right there? That looks to me like another spike coming. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I pulled a leaf away and it looks like a spike embryo. <laughs> you can tell the difference between um, a root embryo and a spike embryo. And I know that's probably not what they're called, but that's what I call them. Um, a spike embryo is like oval shaped and a root is round. So when you pull a leaf off and you see like a bulge coming through the leaf underneath it, if it's oblong or oval shaped, you might be getting a spike. If it's circular, probably just another root. So just FYI. Um, and the only reason why I know that is because I've pulled off a couple leaves on old plants and that's what I've seen. So um, a lot of those spike buds or embryos, they don't actually progress for me. <laughs> um, and there's a few over here that I'll show you what I mean. Um, but that's that's the difference. So that's her. Um, all of these don't have actual names. I've named them so I can keep track of them. Um, but I've named them after Disney princesses, and honestly, at the time, it seemed cute to me because I love Disney, but I'm a little ashamed telling you on film that I named my orchids after Disney princesses because I'm in my 30s, and um, it's a little childish. But whatever, um, <laughs> that's what I did. Uh, so this is one that's not doing well. Um, she definitely had um, a run-in, shall we say, with some ice cubes. Um, her roots are just destroyed. Destroyed. Uh, you know, it's frustrating for me because it does set them back so far and it takes about two years to take an orchid from a rootless state to a healthy blooming state. So I've got two years ahead of me before this orchid's going to bloom again more than likely. Um, and she's going to I mean, her leaves are going to droop. It's, it's going to be pretty dramatic. She's going to throw a fit. And justifiably so. I mean, someone really... Oh, that's a root embryo. Just in case you're wondering. She's got roots under there. See how it's round? The root's going to come out of there. I see how that one 
is round. That's where her roots are going to come out of. So that's what they look like um, before they pop through. Um, whereas, um, I'll show you in a minute, a flower spike embryo is, lo is oblong or oval shaped. Uh, she has grown no roots and no leaves in my care. I've had her, I would say, about three or four months. Uh, so I'm not really surprised by that. Um, she's she's still in her downward spiral. So until she gets she hits the bottom of that downward spiral, um, she's not going to progress. So I'm not not happy, but I'm not concerned. I know I can save her. I've saved plenty of orchids that were pissed off before. Um, this is another one that I got. Um, you know, in the same time span as that one. This one was on the um, sale table. I got her, for, I think, for three or four dollars. And so she was in that one store that waters with ice cubes. So <laughs> they kicked the crap out of her. Um, this one I got from the store that doesn't water with ice cubes. She's got quite a bit of new roots going on too. That yellow root right there, I have to go in and trim that. Again, I haven't watered my orchids yet today, so they are dirty and dusty and gross, um, and I know that, so don't worry. I don't leave them like this constantly, um, but every week I do go in and I take care of all of that. Um, she had this leaf growing when I got her. Um, this one has since grown in my care. I dropped the entire orchid, because <laughs> they can be a little top heavy sometimes. Um, and her leaf split when it was like this big. But as you can see, that trauma did not affect it. It has grown and it is growing, you know, the same size. Maybe it's still growing. So maybe even larger than the older structures. Um, I don't think this is the one, sorry, I don't mean to make it blurry and annoying. This is not the one that has the spike embryo. So, um, this one is the one that I'm doing an experiment on the spikes. So I did a video a couple weeks ago about flowers, you know, Phalaenopsis flower spikes and how you can get them to rebloom and should you cut them, where should you cut them, why should you cut them, blah, blah, blah. So I did a little experiment on her. She had two spikes. So I cut one, as you can see, or maybe you can't because I'm realizing that the light coming through the window is making this difficult. Um, I cut one and I left one. The one that I left, the tip is still green, as you can see. It's not browning out. And um, she seems like she's possibly developing. This is gonna be really interesting to try to focus on for you. See that there, popping out of that node along with the dust. Um, that looks like a branch to me. So the one that I did not cut may have independently decided to branch at her first available node. So that was the last node that was used by her. The first available node is right there, and it looks like she's gonna pop out a branch. And her spike, her tip of her spike is still healthy. Whereas the one that I cut, nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. I mean, there's a slight swelling possibly there, but um, yeah. But I mean, she hasn't drawn it back. She hasn't taken the energy out of it. So maybe, who knows, it's just an experiment to see, you know, which, which way goes faster. She is growing a new leaf there. Um, as you can see, it is slightly purple. So I'm not sure if she's getting an, as much nutrients as she needs, or it might just be, you know, a trait of this orchid that new leaves have a slight purple tinge. Um, she is also not one that has an embryo. Um, but other than that, she's doing really good. She's the one with the like the pale pastel pink um, flowers that I that I think are just so beautiful. So I would like more blooms on her. Uh, this one, <laughs> this is my wild woman. Her leaves are. This is another one I got on the sale table. She um, didn't have any spikes left. Um, wow, look at those. <laughs> I don't know if it's like this because they kept moving the direction of the plant while she was developing these leaves, or if maybe she had some trouble hydrating herself, or maybe they weren't giving her enough hydration, and so the leaves twisted and whatever, I don't know. But the leaf that's growing in my care is growing straight. <laughs> so I don't know what, you know, if, if it was just a trait of this orchid, you know, that would be one thing, but my new leaf is growing straight, and it's 
it's growing as big as the other ones, so I'm not really sure why these are so very gnarly looking, but whatever. Uh, she's healthy otherwise. Um, she doesn't really have that many green growing tips. She has like one or two, but her um, root system is relatively healthy considering where she came from. Um, but yeah, she's not really doing much else as far as that's concerned. Let me see if she's one of the ones that has the buds on her. No. Okay. This one definitely does. This is my last Phalaenopsis. Yes, your torture is almost over. Um, she, I call her Snow White because <laughs> she's got beautiful white blooms. Um, these are all roots she grew in my care. She lost all her roots, <laughs> so she was not a happy bunny for a while. Um, you know, when I say all of her roots, you know, the majority. She does have a few old aerial roots, but I wasn't about to shove them down in the water. Um, so, you know, she's not, she wasn't the happiest girl for a while. She developed this leaf in my care. She was already developing it. It's not quite as big as the old, other ones. Um, but again, she had no roots. Now she's got this one coming. And the reason why I took her out is because I want to show you what a flower spike embryo looks like. You see that? That's a flower spike embryo or bud or whatever it's technically called. So you notice how in the other one I showed you it was a round shape? This is oblong. Now she's had that since I got her and nothing's happened to it. But again, she hasn't had roots for a fair amount of time or she's had very poor roots for most of the time that I've had her. So that might be why that hasn't developed. It is still healthy looking, so maybe it will, but I don't know for sure. But yeah, that's what that's what a flower spike embryo looks like, or whatever the technical term is for it. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's my orchids, <laughs> my Phalaenopsis orchids. That's their update. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, let me know. I was thinking of potentially doing an update on all my different types of orchids. I do have 80-something orchids and a bunch of different types, um, so I don't know if you guys would be interested in that, but I was thinking of possibly doing that. Um, I have pretty much decided at this point that I'm not going to buy online anymore. Um, I probably will break that rule if I see something I really want, but even like from reputable places, I've gotten a lot of plants with fusarium and I just don't, I just don't want to deal with it anymore. <laughs> um, I just don't, I really don't. Um, the only type of orchids that are really available in my area because I'm in New York are Phalaenopsis orchids. Um, and they're available from local supermarkets and um, like home improvement stores. Lowe's sometimes will carry Cattleyas, sometimes. Um, but not very frequently because I don't think they sell very well. My first Cattleya that I ever got was from Lowe's. Um, so I don't, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be ordering online anymore. Um, because I just feel like unless I can see the plant, look at its roots, you know, and pick the plant out myself, I just feel like sometimes they're a little careless with the plants that they send you. I mean, for instance, this one up here, this Catlia, I've been struggling with her since I got her. She came to me with such extremely desiccated pseudobulbs. I was surprised I was even sent this plant and it wasn't cheap. <laughs> It's not a cheap plant and it was in really bad shape when I got it and it's from a quote unquote reputable um, orchid supplier. So my husband and I are planning a trip down to Disney in April and he has decided that he will no longer fly. I'm not really happy with that decision because I hate the car ride but one of the benefits of the car ride from New York to Florida is on the way back maybe we can hit some orchid nurseries he doesn't know that yet though so shh. <laughs> don't tell him um but yeah I was thinking maybe you know I'll see I'll wait until then and maybe we can hit one or two of the orchid nurseries on our way home and uh, maybe I can just purchase my orchids that way and keep it at that I mean typically I do go to Disney once a year so I may just be buying orchids once a year when I go down to Florida um, because he has refused to ever fly again. So that may be the case. 
And if that's the case, that's the case. But um, yeah, I just, I, I mean, in addition to learning how to grow orchids, learning how to grow them in water culture, I've also been trying to rescue. And that's very frustrating for a first time grower, you know, like granted March will be two years that I've been growing in water culture, but those two years have been heavy hitters as far as my lumps, as far as, you know, plants that aren't healthy to begin with. And then I bring them home and I think it's me. And then I find out, no, the orchid's sick or, you know, you sent me a, a plant that has no roots or, you know, has bugs or pests, you know, like it's just, I don't know, it's just frustrating. So I think I'm probably just gonna buy in first person, like myself personally picking out the plant instead of ordering online. And that's gonna really limit, you know, me buying orchids, which might be a good thing because I already got 80 something orchids and I don't have a big house. <laughs> so I am running out of space, if not already run out of space. But anyways, I've uh, chewed your ear off long enough. I hope you guys are all having a great end of your summer. Um, and the fall is coming, so hopefully our Phalaenopsis will start to bloom soon. Um, I hope you guys are all having a great day, and I will talk to you again next time.